Good morning, and um, I have the, the wonderful honor of introducing uh, uh, Takada Sensei, is Emeritus Professor of uh, Tokyo, and um, currently working at Nansan, and is attributed to Nagoya, and considers himself a, a wandering philosopher, and all around sage. And today he's going to talk about uh, Karl Rove in relation to Japan. So, Thank you. Thank you very much for coming to this session. Um, I'm going to talk about Kurt Levitt's uh, coming to Japan back in 1936, and uh, that would ignite various interesting reactions afterward. And so um, that's my theme. In October 1936, Karl Levitt, 1897 uh, to 1973, now known as one of Heidegger's children, came to Japan as an exile from Europe. In Rome, his previous place of exile, he had survived over a couple of years thanks to a fellowship provided by one of the American foundations. But facing the expiration of the fellowship, he had to look for new possibilities elsewhere. Under, th under these circumstances, as it happened, he was offered a post at one of the universities in Japan, Tohoku Imperial University in Sendai, one of the eight prestigious imperial institutions. But, su uh, but such high-sounding title remained almost meaningless to a European philosopher. The offer apparently was not particularly to his liking, but he had no choice at that moment. Thus he reached Japan after a long voyage from Naples and stayed there for, in st stay Japan Sendai there for over four years until January 1941 when he chose to leave for the United States. 1941, of course, is the year of attack, uh, Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor. During the four-year period of his exile in Japan, much is not clear about his daily transactions, what he did or whom he met, except for the several days after the arrival and a few days before his departure, of which uh, we can now read in detail in his travel diary, uh, Reise Tagesbuch, published in, nine, in uh, as recent as 2001. Fortunately for us, however, he left several documents that allow us to see in a broad outline what went on in his mind. The dominant theme lay in the idea of Europe and its spirit, particularly in its late modern phase of decline and fall. Uh, in his term, nihilism, nihilism. Lovett began his duty as a teacher of philosophy in the unknown land by summing up what he had thus far done. His inaugural lecture was uh, delivered on the 20th December 1936, uh, the year of his arrival, under the title of uh, The Idea of Europe in the German Philosophy History, Die Idee von Europa in der Deutschen Philosophie der uh, Geschichte. It was a succinct picture of what he had been doing as a philosopher. About one third of the lecture is devoted to Hegel as a foundation of philosophy of history, explaining the essentials of his phenomenology of spirit. There, as you know, the history is conceived of as an unfolding of the absolute spirit in its historical self-liberation from the orient oriental immaturity to the occidental perfection. The ancient Greece, uh, one root of the European spirit, has a pride of place in its transition because there, for the first time, the substance of spirit becomes an individualized subject, whereas in the ancient Orient, sub, uh, sub, substance of spirit becomes an individual, uh, uh, substance of spirit remains an, an, an articulated mass. Rome uh, contributes to a synthesis between public state and private right. However, spirit in its stages of classical antiquity is not yet ultimately free as it is con constrained by the outer forces such as fates. It's only by the world historical mediation of Christ that spirit can come to its true and absolute uh, liberation when the substance of spirit becoming a human subject. History, Hegel says, ends here and from here it begins. From then on, Christianity is making a development, uh, development from the medieval Roman Catholic Church to the Protestant Reformation, where reconciliations made between church and state, conscience and law, or liberty and discipline. 
Thus, the principle in Hegel's philosophy of history can be sought in the development and progress in the consciousness of liberty. The Reformation in this way is, so, uh, is thought to give birth to the Enlightenment as well as the French Revolution, with which Hegel comes to an end in his world history. These, all, these are all you all know. Obviously, as Lovett remarks, Hegel leaves profound problems, and to these that Lovett then goes on to address himself. The fundamental problem among others, lies in the fact that Hegel makes too much of the advent of Christ and thereby transposes such a typical Christian concept as the date of last judgment into such an extraordinary concept as the, the end of history. What is then radically required is an overcoming of Christianity as is fabricated into Hegel's history of philosophy. And it is precisely this job that is left to the post-Hegelians uh, such as Feuerbach, Marx, and Kierkegaard. The last two, Marx and Kierkegaard, as it happens, form a striking contrast in their move to dis disentangle and disunite the Hegelian synthesis of history and Christianity. Whereas Kierkegaard decides to put aside the history, uh, history part in his existential commitment to Christianity, Marx decided to recapture an Edenic state of equality in history by the communist revolution, as you know. In both cases, what counts is a nihilistic act of decision, which becomes, to a large extent, a symbolic uh, representation of the prevailing spirit, uh, spiritual decline of Europe. On this issue of European decline, as Lovett sees it, Nietzsche gives the most comprehensive and penetrating analysis. In Nietzsche's view, as, uh, as its roots, uh, uh, at its roots lies Christianity, because Christianity, in its inception, annihilated all the values that resided in the pagan antiquity, such as the Greek ideas of nature and cosmos. And if and when the Christian, Christian values should come to naught, at its, uh, as it need happens, there remains nothing in the way of positive valorization. The, ni the nihilism lurks in Christianity. That nihilism lurks in the Christianity in his uh, dialogue, and with that in mind, he, uh, sorry, that nihilism lurks in Christianity his, uh, his di diagnosis, and with that in mind, he decides to take his way toward ancient Greece in search of a way out. The idea of eternal recurrence is, is a formulation that comes up in his desperate Nietzsche's desperate effort to overcome mo the modern nihilism. Lovick could have concluded his inaugural lecture with Nietzsche, but he added Burkhardt uh, to wind it up with. In an ordinary history of philosophy, Burkhardt, cultural historian rather than philosopher, is not in order. But to give a balanced perspective onto the European nihilism, he was a necessary figure for Lovett. For in the increasingly deteriorating world of European spirit, Burkhardt, unlike Nietzsche, endure the difficulties of the age and almost alone as a cheerful pessimist Unquote, kept the liberty of th thinking in the spirit of the ancient Greece. Thus far, I have troubled you with a longish summary of Lovett's inaugural lecture in 1936, because it is an important document that allows us to see the outline of his philosophical positions at that time. Nietzsche, we know, had been his major concern since his days of philosophical apprentice uh, apprenticeship. Not only did he deal with Nietzsche in 1923, but he also produced a monograph study on Nietzsche, Nietzsche's philosophy of eternal recurrence, Nietzsche's Philosophie der ewigen uh, Wiederkunft. The, to deepen his study, it's natural for him to make further investigation into not only A, the contemporary philo uh, philosophical cultural situation in which uh, Nietzsche was placed, but also B, the context of philosophical tradition in and against which Nietzsche took his position. As for B, the context of philosophical tradition, Lovett thought it necessary, as we can reasonably, uh, reasonably surmise from his lecture, 
to go back at least to Hegel, and uh, this was the a project he actually took upon himself to do during his stay in Sendai, and eventually was uh, to finish it as a book from Hegel to Nietzsche, Revolution in 19th Century Thought. As for A, the further, uh, the further appraisal of the contemporary philosophical cultural situation, Lovett adopted a comparative method. The intellectual figure he chose through whom to throw Nietzsche into relief by comparison was Jakob Burckhardt, Swiss historian and uh, art and culture, best known for his civilization of the Renaissance in Italy, 1860, but he also left a substantial amount of works on the uh, ancient Greek culture, as can be witnessed by his monumental A Cultural History of Greece, 1898 to 1902. By putting these two contemporary Hellenists, as it were, uh, Bukhart and Nietzsche, in, in juxtaposition, Lovett tried to clarify their different attitudes toward history in reference to ancient Greece. Thus came out Jakob Bukhart, The Man in the Midst of History, 1936, which he had finished in Rome just before his move to Sendai. Seen in this light, Lovett's inaugural lecture was a perfectly honest presentation of what he had been engaged in and where exactly he stood at that moment as a philosopher. And at the same time, we must note, it showed a means of his pride, a uh, measure of his pride as a specialist on the history of modern philosophy, whose essential problematic, as he saw it, as nihilism, nihilism. With uh, remarkable consist consistency, Lovett pursued this lifelong concern, that is, the idea and ideal of Europe and its nihilistic consequences. But settled in Japan, as he was spending his life in the circumstances totally and almost in every respect different from those he used to in Europe, he found it naturally difficult not to be affected by what he was uh, uh, going to, uh, what uh, was going on around him. He later recalled uh, in 1943, most Japanese, unquote, most Japanese customs, actions, or reactions uh, are just antipodal, uh, antipodal to ours. Tools are handled in the opposite way, where we expect a pushing motion, there is a pulling motion. He, he was in mind, uh, saw, a motion of saw. Uh, the, where are we? Uh, letters. Letters are addressed beginning with the city and ending with the name. Uh, the courtesy requires that the wife takes off her shawl when she greets a man, while here in the West, a man takes off his hat when a lady steps into the elevator. But this last example, of course, unfortunately, uh, only applicable to those good old days and uh, no more true on both sides of East and West. And Lovett continued significantly, quote, the same contrasts are to be found in the feeling and thinking, end of quote. With his coming to Japan, Karl Lovett, the former student of Husserl and Heidegger, with the academic record already of two books on Nietzsche and one book on Burkhardt, and now in the course of preparing what was to be his op opus magnum from Hegel to Nietzsche, uh, was unexpectedly compelled to reflect on the problems of cultural difference not general cultural difference, but the particular one that, as it turned out, that would defy the ideal of philosophy as he knew it. He really expressed his, his views on this uh, topic while he was in Japan, but fortunately, we are in the possession of his two articles, which let us in on what, prob uh, what probably went on in his mind during his exile period in Japan. There were, uh, these were written, two articles were, uh, two articles were written in, in the United States in 1943. One is entitled, Japan's Westernization and Moral Foundation, from which we have already quoted a while ago. And the other is entitled, The Japanese Mind, which is also subtitled, much to the embarrassment of the Japanese, a picture of the mentality that we must understand, we, we are to conquer. Of course, it was in wartime. 
As this provocative subtitle suggests, his views on Japan expressed in both of them were fairly negative. The gist of his argument is expressed in the terse proposition, quote, modern Japan is a contradiction in terms, which, however, exists. And further quote, for that which is modern is Western, and, the, uh, and that which is Nippon Seishin is not modern, but immemorially old, end quote. According to him, although the Japanese mentality was poles apart from that of the modern West, the Japanese believed they had successfully gone through modernization. The proof of the matter could be found in the conceptual fabrication Wakon Yosai, the idea that the traditional Japanese spirit could and should be made perfect by amalgamating it with the Western learning, which however, which, however remained as essentially materialistic. This forced act of grafting was in fact not a creative mixture at all, but, but an entity, as he saw it, fabricated on the fundamental principle of a means to an end relationship, a means to an end relationship. The Western learning, a fruit of Western modernity, was always and already determined to serve as a means to the Japanese spirit, which is the eternal end. The underlying general paradox was, underlying great paradox was, as Lerbitz saw it, that uh, Japan's westernization, quote, was effect effected by an imperial edict. It was given birth to by the development of the antique, uh, and I'm quoting, it was given birth to by the development of the antique deep-grained habits of unforced obedience, loyalty, and respect for authority, end of quote and not by the modern Western hallmark of a spent spontaneous movement of emancipation or self-liberation. One of the answers Lervit came up with is in the mysterious notion of nothingness. The typical Japanese way of thinking, in quote, has never been built up from logical concepts. Rather, it has been a direct intuitive grasp expressed in paradoxical images, end of quote. Lervik took, an, uh, took as an exemplary exponent of such thinking, Nishida Kitaro, who Lervik says, quote, attempts to understand in terms of Western philosophy the Buddhist experience and notion of nothingness, end of quote. Lervik also says, quote, great, the great emptiness or nothingness as achieved by the meditation of Zen Buddhism has indeed the power to concentrate a man's mind and body in one single point, on zero, abstracting himself from all sensual impulses, private emotions, and public emotions." End of quote. Such a kind of freedom, Lovett further thought, could be of good use, particularly in a totalitarian state, where it would be easily capitalized to bring soldiers' life to zero. The last remark may be read as, a, as strongly reflecting the wartime circumstances under which these two articles are published in the United States. But it seems to me that Lovett grasped two of the most fundamental points about the Japanese cultural thought. First, in the contradic contradictory entity called Wakon Yosai, he rightly perceived what Thomas Kasulis has ingeniously designated as the argument by relegation, argument by relega relegation, where, quote, Kasulis uh, note, opposing positions, uh, positions are treated not by refuting them, but by accepting them as true, but only true as part of the full picture. That is, rather than denying the opposing position, one uh, compartmentalizes or marginalizes it as being no more than one part of the more complete point. Uh, uh, sorry, this is very complicated. Rather than denying the opposing position, one compartmentalizes or marginalizes it as being no more than one part of the more complete point of view for which one is arguing. It's very complicated. The second is, end quote, the second is, is quoting from the Japanese uh, philosophy source book. The second is the assumption that Japan uh, thinks Japanese always and already functions as the end to which everything can be employed as a means. 
And precisely this was the fonts and origo, the origins of the fan, uh, fanatic patriotism that the Japanese showed in pre and interwar period. And I'm afraid uh, has not vanished entirely yet. It has been manifesting itself in a variety of forms, including the so-called Nihon Jinron that carries with it that deplorable myth of uniqueness. But we must, not, uh, we must get back uh, where we were. The four-year period of love, its exile in Japan. For it was there that is a reflection on the historical consequences of the European philosophy as nihil nihilism came in touch with what he had, uh, what he had never experienced before, that totally different culture and thought of Japan. It's notable that right from the first seminar, seminar class in Sendai, he underwent an amazing experience. A quote, I love it. One, studied Arist one student uh, studied Aristotle, this is a famous pa passage, uh, he repeated several times. One studied Aristotle, another Hegel and Kierkegaard, another Karl Barth, uh, Martin Heidegger and uh, Karl Jaspers. Another translated uh, Jakob Burkhardt's Weltgeschichtliche uh, Betrachtungen, and yet, uh, and yet not yet translated in, into English. And my assistant studied the German literature of the Middle Ages in the original text, which I did not understand. But all these books were merely books for them, unrelated to their proper historical background and un uh, unrelated to the Japanese feeling and thinking." End of quote. But their future, these uh, students' future, Lovett goes on to say, can be easily read in the behavior of their seniors, Japanese seniors. And quote, at the age of about 50, they realize that the world of our great literature, the Western literature and philosophy, is not their own world. They lost interest in it. And privately, they turned back to some genuine Japanese things in art, music, or literature." End of quote. This phenomenon of discarding the Western learning one devoted oneself to in youth and returning to the Japanese staff in her his later years has earned the special designation in modern Japan, uh, the Toyo Kaiki, the going back to the Orient. Yet again, another instance, of, uh, instance that shows the magnetic, magnetic part of the Japanese end. Something went wrong, Lovett must have thought. Particularly problematic is their way of, Japanese way of appropriation. In German, uh, appropriation, of which the prime instance is that of Wakon Yosai. The appropriation, aneignung, of something other and foreign in its Europe, European sense of the word, quote, would pr presuppose that one can alienate or distance oneself from oneself, and that one then, on the basis of the distance one has acquired from oneself, makes what is other's own as something foreign, quote, end of quote. As a result of these de deliberations on this, uh, this issue of cultural divide, which came up in his exile in Japan, Lovett decided to leave a special work that uh, deals with his topic of European nihilism while at the same time addressing the problematic of the Japanese culture and thought. The work is European Nihilism on the Spiritual and Historical Background of the European War, published in 1940. It was written in 1940, his fourth and virtually last year in Sendai and the year before departure to the United States. That it was specifically written to the Japanese readership is evident from the fact that its first publication came in Japanese translation in a monthly journal, She Saw Thought, in three monthly installments. The original German had to wait for his publication in 1983 when it was to be included in the collected work, Zemtliche Schriften. As a whole, it was, the book Nihilism was a largely a consistent development and uh, substantial amplification of what he had ex explicated in his inaugural lecture back in 1937. Dealing with the same theme of European decline, the author this time emphasized 
as, ma uh, as much of its historical side uh, as, on, as on that of his, uh, philosophy. The German Reformation and the French Revolution were now clearly set as the landmarks of the destruction of traditional unity of Europe. Particularly notable on the philosophical side was the inclusion of Heidegger's, Heidegger as one of the significant post-Nietzschean thinkers. And uh, perhaps some uh, uh, more notably, was Heidegger was subjected to Lovitz's unsparing criticism. Uh, Lovitz, by the way, uh, was the first among Heidegger children to make a revolt. But most importantly, it was through its afterward, the, the book uh, Nihilism, it's afterward to the Japanese readers, so entitled, that uh, the work uh, European Nihilism revealed itself as a special book for the Japanese. It must have come as a surprise to the Japanese readers because its author's radical and the uh, uh, radical uh, uh, attitude. Uh, but uh, it must be forgotten, it must not be forgotten the necessary link that exists between this afterward and preceding main body and that discusses, uh, uh, European, uh, discusses Europe and its spiritual decline. This is, I think, is a very important point. Having noticed the deep-grained ambivalence in the Japanese attitudes toward the Western civilization, the ambivalence in that while they admire the West, West in its material achievements, on the one hand, they didn't hesitate to express their loathing toward its spiritual aspect, Lovett wrote as, and Lovett lo, uh, wrote as follows, quote, a bit, a bit long quotation. It may seem strange to my Japanese readers when a European, that is Lovett, outlines in a Japanese journal a history of European spirit that is useful for the benefit of Japanese consciousness. For what could be more welcome to a Japanese patriot, and all Japanese are patriots, even most broad-minded and free-thinking, uh, what would be more welcome to a Japanese patriot than to hear from a European that the unity of Europe has decayed, that ancient Europe is at an end, and that our final word is nihilism, nihilism, which has become vigorous. But on the other hand, what could be more unwelcome for a European than to encourage the disparagement of Europe in a non-European country? The reason why I decided to write this, this book and have it translated was not to run uh, thereby the risk, as it were, uh, so that Japanese reader, uh, with half pity for us Europeans and with, with a full sense of self-satisfaction for being Japanese, might understand my honest thoughts in her, his favor. This being not the case, however, it is necessary for me to include at the end, uh, as an afterward, a justification that at the same time can't avoid being a critique. It's very complex. And uh, in a word, a justification of European self-critique and a critique of Japanese self-love. Justification of European self-critique and a critique of Japanese self-love, end quote. And the word self-love is, uh, Japanese self-love becomes very important. Uh, what he writes under the title of European nihilism now is a history of the steady decline of Europe and its spirit, even to the point of facing nihilism. The Japanese readers to whom it is dedicated might gloat over its import because it could corroborate their sense of self-centered superiority they hold over Europe in the furtherance of Japanese spirit. If they found it that way, they couldn't be more mistaken. What the author would like them to grasp from its reading is not the waning and decline of Europe as such, but rather the underlying cause and the origin of that waning. Ironical as it may sound, it's none other than European spirit of self-critique that brought about its decline and waning. But the greater irony is that nothing's more vital and irreplaceable for Europe than this spirit of self-critique because uh, it is always already prepared to risk even its own self for the sake of truth. 
And herein lies, he said, the real meaning of the European philosopher's acts of criticism on his own Europe. The work European nihilism is in itself an example as, as well as a justification of European self-critique. And when read in this way, the European spirit of self-critique will be properly grafted into the Japanese reader's mind. But in case it be read otherwise by the Japanese readers, and hence the European spirit of self-critique wouldn't be conveyed, but lost on the complacency of the Japanese spirit, then such a reading will prove a living instance of the Japanese self-love, Selbstliebe. Let it be read in, uh, lest it be read in such a way, Lovett takes the trouble to append the afterword to the Japanese readers and in it to give its critical views on Japanese culture and thought, which forms, as a sort of precursor, a summary statement of what he is to elaborate in those two articles we've seen above. Here I won't go into the problem of Lovett's prejudi prejudices and limitations in his observations and analysis of Japan, or for that matter, in his analysis of his own uh, Europe as well, because nobody can be free from them. What is important and interesting is the point that his work comes to serve as a function of European self-critique and Japanese self-love. It's not that they are interrelated, but that they become the two faces of the same coin, the, one, the positive and the negative. To put it bluntly, the European self-critique in Lovitz's parlance is tantamount to philosophy per se, while the Japanese self-love, non-philosophy or anti-philosophy. Of course, there is nothing uh, new about this Eurocentric state of affairs. It only adds another example of Orientalism. But I think Lovitz's binary pair of contradist contradistinction will prove useful to a better mapping of modern Japanese philosophy. On the self-love camp, so to say, we can find some of the representatives of the so-called Kyoto School, for their ultimate end seems to lie in the acquisition of the state of self-elimination, self-effacement, be it nothingness or human relations, Aida Gara Watsuji. The self-love as a Lovitz conceives it is characterized by the non-presence of the other, the other, through which and only through which the self comes to a responsible being. It is thus that the thinker of mysticism like uh, Izutsu Toshiko is also included in this camp of self-love. And needless, uh, uh, needless to say, there will be a whole bunch of uh, people for its candidates. On the self-critique camp, perhaps most pro prominent is uh, Mariyama Masao, who was, in fact, inspired by the alarming idea of Lovitz's Selbstliebe at the inception of his critical deliberations on Japanese thought. Uh, the, uh, it, the, the, it was clear uh, in his uh, uh, small book uh, entitled Japanese Thought, it was, uh, it's, it's, it's translated in German but not into English yet. Gathering together with and around him are the so-called modernists, uh, not uh, the name, not to their satisfaction, uh, though, who are concerned with and about the problems of, so to speak, non-individuality in Japanese modernity. Kato Shuichi is one of its eminent representatives. In the genealogy of this camp, we can place uh, Abe Kinya, Abe Kinya, a historian of medieval Europe, but also known for his critique of Seken, uh, which we can say Watsuji's Aida uh, taken in a self-critical light. But in this day and age of post-colonialism, uh, Lovitz's binary formula of self-critique as philosophy and self-love as non-philosophy, obviously requires a revision. Particularly so since uh, what the uh, aspects of Lovett called self-love have attracted so much attention from abroad and been flourishing as an important commodity in an inter international market called Japanese philosophy. So let me propose by, by way of conclusion my humble suggestion as a way to renovate Lovett's gadget of an international uh, suggestion of an inter uh, suggestion lies in the international uh, cooperation 
in Japanese philosophy. My suggestion is that taking advantage of Kasulis's seminal conceptual uh, pair of intimacy or integrity, we rename Lerwitz's uh, binary formula of self-love, self-critique into that of intimacy and integrity. For as I can see, as far as I can see, the two pairs, uh, self-love and self-critique, intimacy and integrity, two pairs have much in common in their references. In their reference, I'm sorry. And then it is perhaps a piece of wisdom for the international members of this society to do a division of labor. That is to say, those belonging to the integrity-oriented cultures are encouraged to deal with the intimacy cap of Japanese philosophy, and conversely, those pertaining to the intimacy-oriented cultures are urged to address themselves to the intimacy cap. For instance, what the late Robert Bella called a people of hyper-individualism, alias North Americans, would take themselves to the side of intimacy self-love camp to tame their extremity. And the um, people of hyper-intimacy, uh, hyper-intimacy, alias the Japanese, would devote themselves to the integrity side so that they may deconstruct the remnant of what Lovett unforgettably designated as Selbstliebe. Thank you very much. Hmm. Uh, uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for uh, confusing my thought in the first place. And the, well, the Lovett is a scholar, the philosopher of uh, Western European thought, you know, European thought through and through. So that uh, self-critique, mm -hmm. taking distance, is uh, I think is a second nature to him. So. so, so okay. Is that it? But I, I think it was clear. Uh, sorry. Um, um, okay. So, uh, Lovett is a I think with Lovett uh, never thought in that way because. Mm, 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 mm.
That's a very good question. That's very good question. You see, the, uh, I re- a bit referred to Bukhart, Jakob Bukhart. It was a very mysterious book, or very hard to understand. But uh, uh, as I understand it, he uh, studied Bukhart in order to clarify Nietzsche's position, as well as Nietzsche, uh, you see, is too radical as a, as a nihilist. So that, so much so that, uh, uh, one, as a consequence of European thought, it was too radical. There's no end. You see, it's, everything is gone, and uh, particularly the Christian tradition. Uh, and uh, went back to uh, some Greek idea of historical return. But uh, that wouldn't, perhaps, uh, this is my inference, that the, that's too radical thought. And uh, uh, compared with uh, Nietzsche, uh, Nietzsche Bukhart uh, presented a very um, modest view about uh, uh, negating the contemporary uh, or traditional thought uh, in reference to ancient Greece. And uh, so I think that's one, another consequence. And of course, uh, in, in, in the book uh, Nihilism, he wrote in 1914, Sendai, uh, as uh, one of the post-Nietzschean uh, thinkers, uh, Heidegger was included, and etc. So, but of course, uh, Lerbit has his own very peculiar view of uh, modern history. Uh, but uh, uh, so, but he never thought, in line of the consequences of European thought, there comes up Japanese something. No, never. If I can add just add something, then doing the little bit of research about Spinoza and search mm-hmm. the concept of nature and Spinoza, possibly the relation with it, and then finally the research also about the uh, problem. So it is, it is uh, it doesn't finish with Nietzsche and Nietzsche. No, 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 but no. he has no uh, interest for Japanese culture and Korean. But, but. Mm, so also, uh, of course, Levitt could not speak Japanese, could not read Japanese, mm, could mm, not understand mm. it, so he couldn't know anything about Nishida directly or Japanese thought, isn't it? Uh, he read uh, Nishida's German translation. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. But he, uh, I think uh, he took the essentials. Yeah, I don't believe it's possible to do this. So my idea is mm. that like Harriet didn't understand Japanese, didn't understand the Japanese culture at all. They were just European. They must escape from Europe. Yeah. Not Harriet, but they mm. Mm. It was Well, that, that is one justifiable yeah. criticism, but it, it doesn't matter, you see. Uh, my point is that doesn't matter. You see, the important thing is the binary opposition between self-love and self-critique, you see. That's the point. Whether David understand, understood the Japanese culture correctly or not, we can't decide anyway. No, okay, mm. that's not a problem, but if I don't understand mm. the language of a culture where I am, if I cannot, I stay just there only two or three years, uh, and then um, why should my opinion about this culture be? But one could uh, say that the, the reverse of the things, because even if you are completely versed in one language, you can't understand its thought and culture. But if you don't understand mm. the language, how can you? Maybe, yeah. But uh, I think it's too. Yeah, not maybe. yeah but that's, that's, I think it is. But too, too uh, severe criticism towards uh, cultural comparatives. That's no, 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 I don't think so. I did. I, I, I love mm. it's one of my favorite uh, writers. Mm. I think he, he well, so if you so if you push so. that argument further, then uh, do you agree that even native speakers can understand its uh, native thought? No, uh, no, no, of course mm-hmm. not. But I think if you are working on philosophy, you have to read philosophical texts. I agree. I agree. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Certainly, certainly, so certainly. I agree. If a Japanese doesn't read Nietzsche, how can you say that? But there are many uh, Japanese specialists on Nietzsche who who don't uh, who are not thoroughly versed in German. No, no, not in German. Mm. It's a, something that doesn't mm. match with mm. what I'm mm. saying and what you are saying. If you don't read Nietzsche at all, because ah. you didn't read Nietzsche at all, so 
All right. Yeah. I. Yeah. I expect that point. Yeah. Yeah. I take that point perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't matter. Yeah. Right now? Yes, over the just five years after. I see the situations. Well, I used to teach over there, so. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, indeed, 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 indeed. But I don't think that his critique on the Japanese culture's self-believer is so important. But uh, when you come to think of Maria Mamaso's works, it it was in fact inspired by that word, and so so much important so I think it has. Mm. 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 Yeah, yeah. I'll come. We'll come back. Yeah. Sorry, I, I can't hear you clearly. What is the role for a tragedy for the collective or for the individual in time history schedule according to history? In reference to Japan or cultural difference? Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. And uh, if after Japan, maybe it has some political options or political schematized political philosophy after his, uh, or after his trip there? Mm. If you have a comment on that. Oh, that's very interesting. That's interesting, but I've never thought about it because, uh, uh, in a way, uh, in view, in his view of European history, philosophy, um, it's come to an end, so that uh, there is no room for fruitful discussion about the society as such. So, uh, but he wrote some essays on society, something else, but. Uh, Compared with Hannah Arendt and etc., these uh, how to get children, uh, he he's I think as far as I know uh, is a bit weak in that point. Hmm. Um, do, do you do you have any idea about Levitt's uh, uh, ideas on society? No. Yeah. Hmm. But but whether it has anything to do with uh, what you uh, propose, but the. Uh, interesting is that the um, he found uh, as says the he found the idea of nature very interesting, and uh, but it uh, came from two sources: nature as Bukat saw it in Greece, and nature as the, the uh, uh, Japanese thinkers like uh, the Kyoto school thinks, uh, Zen Zen Buddhist thought. Th think uh, uh, as as such, and uh, we don't know whether the the, the uh, Japanese idea of nature uh, affected his thought on his idea of nature as de as derives from Greece. It's a very interesting question, but the, he is very tricky because uh, in the uh, 1950 festive to Heidegger, Anteile. Uh, he contributed uh, an essay entitled "The uh, World uh, Happening and, uh, and World History," something like that. Uh, and there, he used uh, made use of uh, uh, the Oriental conception, the Eastern conception of nature as recurrence, or just uh, same comes uh, again, repetition of the same, repetition of the same, and. Uh, uh, if one experiences the different culture, then uh, there is a whole world of difference in, in worldview and etc. 
And then he criticizes um, Heidegger, because Heidegger, after all, is very much uh, uh, limited, uh, the, uh, conditioned by the uh, strong European uh, tradition of philosophy, and etc. So, uh, so he, he, he knew the different concept, nature, but uh, maybe he, he had no mind to develop that, that one, but rather he returned to Bukhart's conception of nature, perhaps, yeah. Uh, sorry, I mean, um, is it okay? Hmm. Uh, shall, shall, shall I ask you no, he, he, he decides. <laughs> okay, <I'm sorry. laughs> Thank you. Um, I just The, uh, it's interesting. The, yeah, it's, that's a very interesting question. But the um, Europeans believed and still believe the, the one of their origins is in Greece, yeah. ancient Greece. Uh -huh. And uh, I think in that respect, Hegel still haunts us, not us, but the Europeans. <laughs> they, it was the Greek who separated their mind from Persians, Oriental Persians. Their despotic uh, rule went on, but in Athens, the democracy, which uh, required as a as an assumption the the, the preposition the assumption the individual strong individuals who decides uh, uh, for, for one's uh, for one's uh, the, the ideology anything like that anyway the um, uh, in Greece began the posing of the other against oneself so that uh, one can distance oneself. And that, uh, and that was the, the, all the more increased by, of course, Christianity, the God, the absolute God. So that kind of tradition, we are totally in lack. We don't have. So if we go back to Kojik and said, there's no self-critique uh, structure. Mm. That's Lovett's view, and uh, yeah, at least I agree. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the. No, no. At the right from the beginning, that's a hallmark of European thinking. Whereas uh, the what he uh, calls Zeus Liebe, self love, is the the uh, in which one can't uh, objectify yourself in oneself. There is no media. So the structure it shares with uh, narcissism, you see. Narcissism is the one in which there's no uh, objectifying mechanism in it. So that's the point. Mm. So I want to return to the discussion later on. Another really simple question, uh, uh, similar to the question I put you before. Levitt couldn't understand Japanese, couldn't read Japanese, but I asked myself in 1936, could the student at the Tohoku University understand German? That's, of that's a very good question. That was a very good question, yes. Uh, the, his inaugural lecture was not included in the Gesamt der Schriften. And uh, I found it only in Japanese translation published in the Bunka the, uh, the, this morning. Uh, Mm, said, but it's a kind of very interesting. At that time, Tohoku Imperial University, particularly uh, Tetsugaku, uh, the uh, philosophy department, had a very close connection with Iwano and Shoten. So, it, at present, it would have been a kind of kyo, that's internal journal. But they had great power. The lots of distinguished people uh, were working there, so much so that they could uh, 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 manipulate. Iwanam Shoten to produce their own internal journal. It's called Bunka. And that was, uh, so I, I found it in Bunka. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I used to 
teach at to faculty related to talk to university. I asked uh, my former colleagues to send me the inaugural. And uh, there was uh, no one could can find the original German, but it was translated by one of these, uh, the, the, uh, it was a superb translation as far as I can see. And uh, yeah, the first impression I read is it's too difficult for in content as well as in, it was delivered, of course, delivered in German. Uh, and uh, yeah, I wonder to what extent they could understand. Yes, so I, therefore, I think Limit Board felt very alone. Uh, he could not speak uh, or speak uh, with a uh -huh. number of people and suddenly and so on. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, yeah. very tough and probably what he saw uh, of Japan was, uh, for example, the terrible nationalistic propaganda mm, 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 and she came from Rome from fascism and then went to so his image of Japan was probably very from of sense sense mm, mm, mm. that's very good the uh, I'm in fact I've been in search of uh, some uh, the, the, the hidden document relating to Derby but there must have been there must have I no, 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 no. Throughout Japan, you did. He, of course, uh, Kuki Shuzo was one of his closest friends, and uh, he—that that was he—he he brought, uh, he invited them to Tohoku, and of course they had, uh, uh, I think, frequent correspondence must have been, and uh, so and Rubit himself went to Kyoto several times and even met uh, Nishida, and uh, was uh, uh, was given a present, it's a kind of that, uh, yeah. And so I think he met, although he, he, he didn't have his uh, Japanese uh, competence, but he, I think, uh, could feel, feel at least, the, the, and, uh, and his circle of friendship uh, must have been very small, and, uh, and uh, most of them, which uh, was made up of elitistic people, uh, except those Tokyo people. I, I, I just don't understand. They, they, he never referred to uh, uh, professors, intellectual professors in Tokyo Imperial University, except for uh, negative comments. Uh, the one Hegelian, he said, it's a very interesting passage. One Hegelian at Tokyo University uh, interpreted uh, the uh, Hegelian uh, thesis, antithesis, and uh, synthesis as uh, uh, three divine uh, paraphernalia of uh, imperial family. And uh, it was just crazy, but uh, so he just uh, made fun of it and poked fun of it. So, uh, and the, the, it's strange that there was Watsuji over there, but uh, he didn't. Made mention, uh, he, he didn't make mention of him, and uh, could have been interesting. But uh, my original plan for this conference is comparison of uh, Watsuji's uh, Ningen no or Gakuto Shun Ringen Gak with Lovett's uh, earlier work, uh, the work for uh, Habitation, uh, Das Individuum, uh, un, uh, etc. And uh, these could be. Uh, com uh, compared in a fruitful way, but uh, it's too, I think, complicated for a conference, so I, so I resorted to historical method. Yeah. Uh, his, uh, what was his collection of books mm. uh, in, uh, saved in Tokyo Imperial Library? Mm. Uh, the first one was the uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I but uh, in, in, the, in the Ningen Gaku, there's, there's no reference to love it. Mm. But in Nigaku, yes, 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 yes. So we don't know when, in which year he read the. Uh, well, Watsuji is a voracious reader without meeting the author, Heidegger, etc. He went to the, the crucial period of 1927 when Zainu Site was published, but he never met. He could have, but never met Heidegger, but, and instead went to Italy. It's amazing guy. I think he, he decided to be, uh, you see, a type of guy who uh, introduced, uh, who digested every uh, thought without, 
mm, without meeting in, in the original <laughs> situation. And uh, yeah. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Even if they met, that there will be no conversation going, on, fruitful conversation going on. David is very explicit, so that uh, he would flatly deny Watsuchi's method. It's it's uh, the good case of appropriation in a Japanese way. He would say, yeah, yeah, it'd be interesting. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, uh, well, I, I would like to say that, uh, we are, well, there is a still uh, observable, the um, uh, practice of Toyo Kaiki in the first place, even scholars, you see, I, I, I'm really, uh, I mean, in fact, uh, medieval uh, specialist, I used to be a specialist on medieval Europe um, and Renaissance, but uh, in my last, uh, in my, my, Later years, right now, I turn to yes, uh, this. Uh, but through I, I, I've got to say, I've through Levitt's help, and uh, but when it comes to students, I think it's the same. Yeah, that they they um, uh, well, I don't like to make a, a disparaging remark my about Japanese students, but they they're very bad at thinking uh, individually. There is no self I can see with which they uh, objectify themselves in the first place. And uh, it's a kind of, what which is I Dagara, yeah, uh, I and you relationship. And uh, uh, always thinking of the uh, distance, the measure of distance between you, not he or she, but the second person. It's very difficult to imagine in Japanese the third person, in fact. so. <laughs> oh, please, please give me criticism for that. I'm from Greece. And I figured it out just a bonus that I've been through that we took, we very close to terminology. Maybe it's the way that we are philosophizing. Mm -hmm. But I mm -hmm. don't know if we do philosophy or something else. Um, not here, I mean, I mean in general, because we don't have the specific methodologies as we should, also I, in the past, it happens. But maybe it's the current situation. We have many subjects now. Mm -hmm. Even from mm -hmm. science, you are even applied with this. Uh, have you read uh, Thomas Casulli's Intimacy or Integrity? Yes. Uh, well, I think it shows a very uh, a kind of direction we we will have to we are constrained to take because uh, at the end, when it comes to bibliography, mm -hmm. uh, he refused to do that. I mean, he uh, took upon himself the the responsibility of being. Uh, uh, kind to intimacy relationship, so that if we if we uh, took intimacy principle as the general principle uh, in writing books, then uh, the the bibliography as uh, we do in a Western style uh, would be impossible. So instead, he just uh, told a story of his uh, history or personal history of of his uh, experience of reading. And uh, uh, since we are scholars, you see, uh, and we can't do it in an intimate style. No, we've got to objectify. Otherwise, we can't uh, uh, have a dialogue. Yeah. So that's why Mariama Maso and etc. Are, are just very much worried about Japan's future. It's very difficult to have Western style dialogue in Japan. In the first place, we just uh, the, 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 the how in the first in the first we we think how my opinion is uh, taken by the other as a feeling, not the logic. 
so that one can't speak loud. Yeah, empathy. Uh, that's right. But em empathy, in a, I think, uh, in a perhaps mm, in a bad way, in, logically speaking. Yeah. So the, the political conversation is uh, difficult in that sense. Yeah. Sontaku. That's the. Yeah. 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 Sontaku is. Yeah. 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 And uh, even kizuna is another word. It's very worrying word. That, that reminds me watsuji. Kizuna and uh, that uh, effaces the individuality that is required for better dialogue. Yeah. This is what I ask myself, for example, if, uh, okay, uh, if we choose Socrates mm. as the philosopher in the Western tradition, mm. uh, Socrates just discussed. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So what Levitt said many, many years ago still hold true. Yeah, for me too. <laughs> Yeah, there's a uh, yeah, the response. Um, That's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> When they get to secondary school, they seem to lose their individuality, so it's not mm. necessarily a Japanese trait. And I think it's a problem that perhaps uh, Lewis ex thinks he's expressing an essentialism, that there's an essential difference, but it's for me it's a social one. And it's just a, uh, a certain way of... I see. Yeah, so, yeah, social. Yeah, 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 I agree. Mm, mm, mm. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's something which is lost as opposed to something which is mm. pre-existing. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, but I think there's a difference in, in between Europe and the uh, USA. In the uh, USA, uh, sure. the students are much more free to raise hands and to talk and uh, give their opinions about anything. And in Europe, uh, it depends, but not, not so much. Mm, mm, I mm. think in the middle between Japan and the USA. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. Within you, even Europe, there may be something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Spanish, so, uh, Certainly. Yeah, yeah. I think in other places. Mm, mm, mm. 
Yeah. The uh, uh, interesting thing uh, is, in historical context, the Japan uh, has been compared with the United States just because immediately after the war, uh, U.S. occupied us, and since then, of course, still occupies them in, 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 in many in many ways. So, I think, uh, as uh, Robert Bella said, the on the one side in America is hyper individualism, and here hyper intimacy, and uh, we uh, the, most of the Japanese just take for take it for granted that the world seems to be uh, very full of different uh, cultures. Etc. But uh, as you said, that the when I first went to England, I found many, many uh, uh, so the, the uh, affinities between Japanese and England. They they, uh, they still make much of modesty, for instance, mm -hmm. which perhaps meaningless in the states. And <laughs> so yeah, I agree. Yeah. I don't know very much about. Uh uh, very little, as a matter of fact, about uh, good uh, uh, child learning. But it's, uh, it always have seemed to me a very interesting life, very surprising. Mm -hmm. A Jewish flying from Germany, I think when he was in Rome, he met Heidegger. Certainly, he yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. And the, I think the meeting was not very friendly. At know? first, it was very friendly because uh, at first, uh, uh, they met at Freiburg, Freiburg University, and uh, Lovett was, uh, at that time, Heidegger didn't have his uh, official position, yeah, yeah. and Lovett uh, is a kind of assistant over there, and, but, and over there, of course, Lovett was a student of Husserl, and there was uh, animosity uh, beginning to take place between Heidegger and Husserl, mm -hmm. and then, and then uh, at the... 1927, uh, or towards that, uh, 20, uh, 26 the uh, Heidegger got the position at Marburg, and then uh, the Lovett was so, so fascinated by uh, Heidegger's thought, he went with him to Marburg. So these are the honeymoon period, and yet uh, the, the divide, the, the uh, begin began with uh, 1933 when Hitler uh, promulgated the uh, the uh, dis segregation law towards Jewish people, and so David had to leave. And it, it, up until then, uh, according to his diary, he didn't know he was descendant of Jewish blood. But anyway, the Nazis were very thorough in. Uh, looking into these matters. So he had to leave Germany and then to Rome. That was a happy period. Yeah, but after, but... Um, I was thinking about a meeting in Rome. Hmm? The yeah. and that's right. He, he that's right, Nazi, Nazi, Nazi badge, Nazi, Nazi, Nazi badge. Yeah, 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 he, yeah. Sure. It surprises me is that whatever reason, Lerbeck goes first to uh, Mussolini's Italy, mm -hmm. and then to Japan, <laughs> and only finally he gets to America. And That's I wonder what mm -hmm. the, his arrival to America must have signified philosophically for him. Well, I think uh, Lovett had no choice but uh, but these because uh, in the first place in Rome the, he's got I think Fulbright uh, a Rockefeller Foundation fellowship, and uh, he chose Rome as his, his uh, first place of exile because during the First World War in which he, engaged, he was engaged, uh, he was a prisoner over there and had a happy experience, in fact, so that he went there just to... Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it seems to be a very happy period, except the Heidegger's visit. <laughs> And then he had uh, difficulty uh, to find the second place of exile. And it, there, there were possibilities at Colombia and etc. But uh, Old Fade and the Cookie is offered, so they just grabbed it. And uh, so it, I think it was uh, fortunate for us to have loved it. Yeah.
in Heidegger that could be fine, please find that place, go live it, but don't tell him. Because if you know that I am yeah. a mediator, mm. don't tell him accept. So mm. it's a strange relation between yeah. yeah. the teacher and the, the pupil, the love and the hate each other. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah and there is a wonderful book in my life in Germany. Mm, mm, uh, mm. It's a kind of diary, the little book, you say about his life when he was young, uh, when he was in the first world. Actually, it was written in Sendai. And yeah, 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 and got, sent it to uh, one of the prizes in, in the States and got it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the reason we, he went to the States, of course, uh, again, uh, he was forced to because uh, at, uh, at first he went to Hartford Seminary, but uh, the, the, there was several routes through which the exiled Germans uh, took their way to the States. And uh, uh, his uh, precursor, so to say, uh, uh, w was uh, like uh, Leo Strauss, and these eminent, uh, Leo Spitzer and uh, even uh, uh, Erich Auerbach, he first went to uh, Istanbul and then to the States. So there must be some uh, set routes. And Revy took, uh, alone took Japan. But anyway, the, the final destination should be the States. As I think they, they thought. And there was, and Revy took, uh, uh, after half to seven, the position of a uh, new school in New York, where uh, Leo Strauss left for Chicago. So there's a kind of uh, friendship and uh, aid society among Jewish emigrants. Yeah. So although Karl Loh seems to emphasize that it's a European tradition to engage in self-criticism, ironically it seems that he didn't reflect upon himself and his own position as almost a, a colonial approach to Japan. So in his early book, The Japanese Mind and How to Conquer Them, and it seems that this is something where he takes an almost paternal approach in writing the book in Japanese and almost telling Japanese people what they have to do. And when he's emphasizing this notion of self-love, perhaps he doesn't reflect that it could have been induced by colonial oppression. There's mentioned for how it seems that the Japanese response to sort of the black ships was to modernize mm. or be colonized. Mm. So they quickly had to, they didn't have an option, but then it's this idea of trying to return to themselves and that's something which was brought about by Europeans. Mm. So it's, perhaps if Karl Loeff can reflect more upon that situation, he could have arrived at a different realization that it's not something which is socially reinforced solely in Japan, but also in the dialect between East and West. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I agree to with you, but uh, uh, as he said several times, uh, what I think uh, touched his colorless mind, the feeling, is that Japanese those days uh, prided themselves on the fact that they have already westernized completely, or more than that. Well, that is perhaps uh, Kerlevit would like to take issue with. Yeah. And uh, that uh, problem is deep-rooted, and uh, uh, we never, I think, more, we little think about uh, the issue of, uh, on the issue of westernization these days. But uh, uh, after the Second World War, we, uh, we did the second westernization uh, after the mother of America. And, uh, so again, it's, it's worse, you know, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and after that, we, uh, we've been facing uh, first so-called internationalization uh, in the 70s. 
And then, uh, beginning 90s or around the middle of the 80s, globalization. And uh, so in that sense, we are exposed to uh, self-critique uh, peoples. And uh, so we've got to do something to do with that. And uh, so Mariama Masao, at the uh, earlier stages uh, of the problem, uh, I think uh, clarified the issue, uh, the, the taking the hint from Lovitz, self-love. But uh, unfortunately, I think Maria Masao's idea thought hasn't been uh, 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 handed over or uh, digested in a, a good way in, in Japanese philosophy, Japanese thought. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the relationship with Miki is very interesting. Uh, they must have met, but uh, as far as I know, uh, he Lovit didn't meet him in Japan, and uh, they, they yes, of course, Lovit and Miki uh, had uh, in common uh, the uh, critical view on Watsuchi's idea of Ningen no Adagara, uh, particularly. Uh, uh, Philosophical anthropology, yeah, completely. Uh, Miki is very much was very much critical of Watsuchi's mm -hmm. way. Yeah, sure, mm, mm, mm. But after all, Miki was um, Miki had a very hard time in, during the war, see, and uh, so. But but yeah, there could be a chance. There could be a chance to to meet. Uh, Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. That uh, is in the genealogy of Japanese thought, uh, is extended to Mariama's right mm. thought on fascism. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. That's right. That's right. So, in that point too, I think it's a good idea to uh, recall again what Lovett did and what Lovett proposed as the is very rough and. Uh, uh, too general a conception, but uh, the, the binary opposition self um, self critique uh, camp. And uh, Miki, of course, belongs to self critique. And uh, Tosaka Jun definitely belongs to self critique. Whereas Watsuji and uh, Nishida and uh, Kuki, I think, also belongs to self love. And uh, I don't know what Tanabe's uh, case, I, I'm just wondering. But, uh, uh, but I think it would be, it'd be fruitful to think in that way. Uh, otherwise, I think we have a jumble of totally different uh, branches of thought. Uh, Sorry. Sorry. Yes, um, like once again, to thank Professor Takeda for a wonderful paper and for facilitating a great discussion which led to an open dialogue between us. So, again, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.